It's the 21st century, and robots are increasingly becoming part of our daily lives. From helpful little vacuums to tireless giants on the manufacturing floor, they are assisting with what experts call the three Ds of robotics. Tasks that are dirty, dangerous, or dull. One exciting new place for the development of robots is in healthcare. Most of us are already familiar with robot-assisted surgery, and big advances have been made in the field of smart prosthesis. But there are many more tasks that robots could be developed for. Join us as we head to the University of California, San Diego, to speak with Laurel Rick from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. The areas in which there are healthcare robotics today. One are robots that are in the body, such as robots that can help to deliver medication or to help with uh, ablation or taking tissue samples, uh, also surgical robots as well. The other type of robots are wearable robots. So these are things like wearable prostheses for people who have lost a limb, also um, robots that can help with mobility, such as exoskeletons. And finally, there's another category of robots that are being used increasingly to provide care to people, which are robots that are outside the body. So these include uh, robots that are able to fetch items for people and help them around the house, um, as well as uh, robotic patient simulators, which are used to train clinicians how to learn to treat patients, and also robots to be providing support in infectious disease management, such as Ebola. Of these applications, the design of useful helper robots is possibly the most challenging, as well as the most needed. As an aging population puts increasing pressure on an already overburdened, already in need, and the numbers are about to increase dramatically. Over 20% of the world's population has physical, cognitive, or sensory impairments. This means that one in five people have difficulty doing many of the tasks that most people don't even think about. Getting out of bed, making breakfast, climbing the stairs, or going to the store. And as we age, we too will start to experience a decline in physical function. So what does one do? Well, typically there are people who are helping to provide care. They're either family or friends or their healthcare providers. Unfortunately, there are far more people who need assistance than there are people to provide it. So robots can help fill some of these care gaps. They can aid overburdened caregivers, they can aid the clinical workforce, um, and they can aid people with disabilities and older adults. While the idea of such helper robots is very exciting, many challenges remain to be overcome. To be truly useful, robots need to perform their task reliably and safely over a wide range of very dynamic settings. This includes the ability to sense and react to real-world environments, even under noisy or visually challenging conditions. For Dr. Rick and her students here in the UCSD Robotics Lab, the ultimate goal is to develop robots that work with people long-term and can be reprogrammed and retasked by non-experts. My vision is to put a robot into someone's home for six months to help people with neurorehabilitation and wellness. And anyone who's a roboticist knows that this is a daunting proposition, both in terms of hardware and software. The key insight about robots in the home is it's not about a robot doing everything for someone. It's about providing scaffolding and giving the right support at the right time. We want to build robots that can adapt to, learn from, and change with a person, not only throughout the week, but even throughout the day. And this is really key in healthcare robotics applications. To facilitate this vision from an AI perspective is challenging. But solving the problem would make a huge difference, both in terms of robot learning as well as helping billions of people in need. We invite you to learn more in the review article, Healthcare Robotics by Laurel Rick.